What's up guys, David here, and welcome back to another video. So today I've got the Game Week 3 Premier League review, uh, obviously this is a series on my channel now, I've got the uh, the preview episodes and I've got the reviews as well, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying the series so far, I'm going to try and do it over the full season, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it there. So if you guys do enjoy the video, please do drop a like on it, comment down below, and uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new around here. So the first game that was on in the weekend was Tottenham against Liverpool, and it ended up finishing 1-1. Liverpool, really, they're going to be very disappointed that they didn't end up winning the game, just because they were the better team overall, to be honest, and uh, Tottenham managed to get a goal with 20 minutes left. James Milner got the first goal for Liverpool, it was a penalty, and uh, then Danny Rose managed to equalise with it. Well, it got crossed to the, it was a cross to the back post, and Danny Rose was there, and he managed to slot it home. Well, the Liverpool were, were the better side, I didn't, they, I didn't think they'll be too disappointed in getting a point, just because I guess they would have taken it at the start getting a point, it would have been a decent result. Yes, I think both sides will be happy with the point, and they'd like to kick on and do a bit, do a bit better in the season, really. So the second game is Chelsea against Burnley, and this is a bit of a demolition job to be honest. Burnley didn't show up at all. Like, they didn't. Chelsea seemed to have so much time on the ball in the end. It was three 0 to Chelsea. Could have been a lot more to be honest. Yeah, Burnley just didn't seem to be closing them down properly. Chelsea they just kept giving the ball to Chelsea, like just kept passing it to them. And Chelsea, Chelsea just absolutely battered them to be honest. The first goal was about Eden Hazard. It was a very good goal, and he's looking like he's back in the, back into top form again, just like he was two seasons ago. So obviously Chelsea would be very happy about all the players looking looking how they were when they, when they won the title. So. Positive signs for Chelsea, definitely. The second goal for Chelsea in the game was Willian. He managed to get his first goal of the season. He was probably Chelsea's standout player last season, to be honest. So he'll be happy that he's managed to get off to a good start, to be fair, and uh, managed to get himself an early goal in the season. And then Victor Moses managed to get the final goal in the 89th minute. He'll, he'll be very happy. Actually, he needs to really get into the Chelsea side. He needs to uh, break in, really, because... Uh, He's, 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 he's done well at West Ham last season, he's proved himself, so I think he needs more of a chance at Chelsea, and I think he could have a good season if, if, they, if they decide to play him. Now, if Burnley do carry on playing like that, then they'll definitely go down, because that just wasn't good enough, to be honest. They, they didn't defend well, they defended very well against Liverpool, obviously, but against Chelsea, it's just, it, just, it just wasn't good at all. Now, the third game is Crystal Palace against Bournemouth, and Crystal Palace, they definitely deserve to get the point. They probably, they probably even deserve to win it, to be honest, but... Uh, they, they, they just managed to get a 93rd minute goal was through Scott Dan. He was he's playing very well for Crystal Palace. He's done it. He's done it like last year. So he played very well. So you know he could maybe be getting an England shout with uh, Jaggy Elka being in the England squad. I don't see why Scott Dan can't replace him. To be honest, Crystal Palace definitely should have very well. Definitely should have scored more than one goal. To be honest, they uh, they did dominate Bournemouth, but Bournemouth will definitely take a point. To be honest, uh, they, they'll be disappointed the way they conceded the goal in the 93rd minute, but. You know, it was a great header from Scott Dan. It was like absolutely miles out, to be honest. He managed to put it right in the far corner. It was a good header from him. But for that, Joshua King managed to get the opening goal for Bournemouth. He did have a decent season last season, so he'll be hoping he can have a similar season to last season and, uh, yeah, hopefully for him get a few goals. So both sides did end up getting their first point of the season. Crystal Palace would have, felt, would have felt that they deserved more, but Bournemouth will feel unlucky because they conceded right at the end. Now, the next game is Everton against Stoke, and Everton managed to win it 1 0. Pretty lucky goal, but they probably did deserve to get the win, to be honest. Uh, it was a penalty from Leighton Baines, and he, hit, he ended up uh, striking it, and uh, Given saved it onto the post, and it hit him on the back, and then went in. It was so unlucky for Shea Given, but uh, yeah, you know, Everton will be very happy getting the three points. They're off to a very good start, seven points now out of the three games that they've played, so they're doing very well at the moment. I was very surprised how Ross Barkley didn't get picked for the England squad, to be honest, just because he's had a great start to the season, got man in the match in the game again, in the last game against Stoke, so I'm quite surprised he didn't get picked for the England squad. But definitely Everton under Ronald Koeman now are looking so much better, like fourth in the table, is it or something? So they're doing absolutely amazing at the moment, much better than how it was with Roberto Martinez. They're looking a lot more solid at the back, so things are going well for Everton at the moment. As for Stoke, they are at, in the, at the bottom of the table at the minute, but I do think they'll be able to rise up the table just because they, 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 they get consistent mid-table finishes, and I, I don't think, I don't see it changing for them. I think last season as well, they did start very slow, so I think they'll be able to turn the season around very soon. Now, this game is Leicester against Swansea, and the, and, uh, the champions managing to kick-start the season, really get through, get the first three points of the season against Swansea. 2-1 winner. The first goal was absolutely amazing. It was good, good passing in the midfield, and Danny Drinkwater doing what he does best, playing the long ball over to Jamie Vardy who ran onto it and managed to smash it home. A great goal from Leicester. Just seems like that was just a similar goal than how they than how they got them last season. So they'll be very happy with that Leicester getting the first three points of the season. And then Leicester's second goal was a very scrappy goal to be honest. It was um, it's, it's just all going around in the box and it fell to Wes Morgan who reacted first and managed to put it into the back of the net. So managing to put Leicester 2-0 uh, two up and then Leroy Fair managed to score and uh, they never really did that for QPR to be honest, didn't have a great time at QPR but seeming to do well at Swansea to be honest, managed, he managed to grab himself a goal to make it 2-1 so he will be happy, he's made, he's made a great start to the season to be honest, getting two goals already. So overall Leicester did deserve to win the game and Jamie Vardy will be very happy obviously as well, managed to get his first goal of the season and 
Uh, Riyad Mahrez did miss a penalty as well, which could have proved costly, to be honest, because uh, Leo, Leo Fair managed to pull one back. It looked like Swansea could have maybe grabbed another one, to be honest, but um, Riyad Mahrez will be very happy that he's been let off, really. And then that's in Southampton against Sunderland, and um, Sunderland managed to get the first point of the season, which... Uh, yeah, I guess they'll be happy with, but the, the way they conceded, the, the way they conceded with five minutes left, it just didn't seem right for Sunderland to be honest. It was a mistake by Pickford, the keeper, but he can't really get too down on it because he got he's, he's had a good start to the season, had a good game, uh, just just that one mistake which ended up costing them. Before that, Jermaine Defoe did manage to get a goal in the 80th minute, so Sunderland could, felt they could have maybe robbed the game with 10 minutes left, but they ended up conceding. But uh, you know, when you have Jermaine Defoe on the side, you can always expect to get a goal or two. You can always have someone to rely on with Jermaine Defoe. So Sunderland were, were very lucky to really have him. If Jermaine Defoe does keep playing the way he's playing, like he did last season, if he keeps up this season, then I don't see why he still can't get into the England squad, to be honest, because I do, I do rate him. I think he's a really good striker, and he can, he, he's always, he, like, he's Premier League proven, he can always get you a goal. It was Jay Rodriguez who managed to get the equal out of Southampton, and he's, he, was, he was great at, like, two or three years ago. He was, he was playing absolutely amazing, but he got injured, then he's dropped off a bit, but managing to get a goal, so he might be able to, hopefully, uh, for him, bring his career back. I think Sunderland would have definitely taken a point going into the game, just the way they, the way they managed to concede, I don't think they'll be very happy with the point in the end. So next game was Watford against Arsenal, and Arsenal ended up winning it 3-1. It looked uh, like a very convincing performance in the first half, definitely, uh, going 3-0 up, I think, in the first half, so... Arsenal managed to get off to a decent start in that game, but uh, second half, when, well, once Watford scored, it all, it all changed. Really. Watford started dominating them. But Arsenal definitely looking a lot better now. Ozil's back, and Sanchez managed to get a goal as well. And Santi Cazorla mainly the, th the three, uh, well, three of like three of Arsenal's big players, I suppose, managing managing to get goals for them. But Arsenal still got a long way to go. I think I still don't think that was good enough. The first half was amazing, but the second half really wasn't good enough from them. And they let Watford back into it. Watford could have easily got a few more goals in the game. Also, Pereira managed to get his first goal for uh, Watford on his debut. So, uh, He'll be very happy with the start that he's made. You see, it is an interesting sign. I said it in the Dundee Deals race. I think it's a very interesting time that he's gone from Juventus to Watford. But it seems, well, so far, like a good signing. So Arsenal will be hoping they can get a few more wins uh, in, in a row, really, now. And they uh, manage to go on a little surge up the table, because that's what they need. As for Watford, I think they've been, they've been quite unlucky at the start, to be honest. I think uh, they had a decent second half. They put in a decent first half performance, and they could have easily got a point in that game. But... Um, they, they were very unlucky against Chelsea as well. They could have easily got a, a point or maybe even three points. I know that seems Hull against United, and both of them before the game had won two out of two, but United ended up coming out on top with a Marcus Rashford goal in the 90th minute. You, it's just unbelievable what Marcus Rashford is doing. Even this season, he's managing to keep up what he was doing last season, and he's, he's, put, he's, put, he's put down a marker. I definitely think he can he can prove a point now and uh, maybe start more games for United because. There's definitely a place still in there for him if, if like Matt isn't playing well or Martial, he can, he can always he can always get in that team. Rashford. United didn't didn't play absolutely amazing to be honest. They did, they had a good game really. They kept the pressure on Hull. Uh, they had they had most of the ball as as expected really. Hull uh, sat back a lot, but United managed to get the goal at the end and I'll and be very happy with that. Hull probably consider themselves quite unlucky just because the, the way the goal happened like in the 90th minute, but. Overall, I'd say United deserve to win it because they had most of the ball. They, they, were, they were the team pressing them most of the game. Down to Sunday's games and the first game was West Brom against Middlesbrough. And that ended up being a nil-nil. I didn't watch the game and I've not seen any highlights. So I don't really know what to make of that. I think, uh, Mid I, think I reckon Middlesbrough will be uh, pretty happy with the point, to be honest. They've made a decent start to his easy manager to get five points in the first three games. So for a newly promoted club, that's a very good start. And West Brom won't be too disappointed with the start they've made as well. I think they're on four points at the moment. So and not a bad start for West Brom, I think they'll just be happy with it. Uh, a normal mid-table season that they get. And on to the next game, and this is the last game of the uh, of the, the game week three. And City, it was against City against West Ham, and City ended up winning it 3-1. Raheem still managing to score two. It seems like he's managed to uh, regain his form under Pep Guardiola. It's definitely good to see, because for, for an England fan, I just hope he does well, to be honest. He managed to score two, he's managed to score one right at the end, and one pretty much right at the start, so... Uh, Raheem Sterling getting off to an absolutely amazing start to the season, to be honest. Also, Fernandinho managed to get a goal as well, and that was, a, uh, that was the second goal of the game when City made it 2-0, two, two and then uh, West Ham managed to pull one back with a Mikel Antonio goal. It just seems like it's a trademark Mikel Antonio goal. The, you know, the cross comes in from the left, and, the left, and then Mikel Antonio's there at the back post to head it home, and he's, he's, he's got a lot of headed goals. I think it's had like eight headed goals since he's signed for West Ham, so... He'll, he'll be very happy with that. He seems to always sneak into the back post and grab himself a goal. Before the Mikel Antonio goal, City were absolutely dominating the West Ham, to be honest. But uh, once uh, Mikel Antonio managed to score, uh, West Ham did turn it around and start playing a lot better. But in the end, City managed to get the last goal with Sterling, who managed to take on the keeper and then uh, managed to pass it into the net, right into the, 
a tight, it was a tight angle and it was an open net. It was a good finish to be fair. It was a really tight angle. So yeah, this is about the end of this Premier League review. If you have enjoyed it, please do drop a like on it. And comment down below your thoughts on the on all the games and everything. And uh, I'll be back again. I'll be back, I'll be back again with the Premier League game week four preview very soon as well. So uh, make sure you subscribe for that. So this is about the end of the video. So I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.